You're listening to the Unbelievers Podcast. There were several groups. One of the principal ones was the reptilians from the Iran complex. Without any exaggeration, it was like being on fire inside. The rats were eating them inside. This stuff was in my mouth. It felt like it was 500 pounds. It was unbelievably hot. My first question would be, were you a member of the Church of Satan, a card-carrying member of the Church of Satan? I don't understand. There's always an argument for everything. You know, just because um, somebody can fake something doesn't necessarily Warren, we found a life form. And that's when I started shitting my pants. So for the person who called, um, I am carrying an alien. An alien, alien baby, and we cover it right here, okay? <laughs> okay. Something is happening. What is it? That's the question. So do UFOs exist? It depends on what you mean, exist. Welcome to the Unbelievers Podcast, Episode 4, Reptilians, Re-Re-Revisited. Episodes 96 and 122 of the Unbelievable Podcast, we heard from a former New Orleans police officer named Matt R., who shared his stories of reptilians sighted during the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and how he later was abducted by reptilians, taken to a mall with a Piccadilly, and forced to partake in their drills. Three years have passed since his last appearance. We have tracked him down to do our first ever interview and find out if the reptilians still plague him and what's up with those Walmarts right here on the program where you continue to learn to unlearn everything you know. Hello and welcome to the Unbelievers Podcast. I'm your host, Russ Ryan, and today I'm joined by my code host in Washington, D.C., Jude Prestia. Hey, Jude. Hey, hello, hello. All right. We're also joined, as always, by our other co-host, Drea Mora. Hello, Drea. Hi. And it wouldn't be the Unbelievers Podcast without Rob Oki, Robo Key, the producer, soundboard engineer. Hello, Rob. I wish Bigfoot were my dad. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> Don't we all? What's happening? Hello, Rob. I so, love Bigfoot. <laughs> so today we're breaking format a little bit. I mean, we're only four episodes in, but today's episode is a little different. Today we are doing our first interview. Yay. Hell yeah. Finally. Woo-hoo. And an interesting one it is. This is our interview with reptilian abductee, contactee, Matt R. Hell it just yeah. hit me. Does R yeah. stand for reptilian? Matt reptilian. Oh, we, well, we weren't supposed to say his name. Damn it. Damn it. No. no. I, I don't, it was just a bleep guess. Bleep it out. Rob, bleep it out. I, I don't think I so. Um, I think the reptilians will bleep it out for us. Oh, so <laughs> a lot it. of people. There's been already um, two interviews on the Unbelievable Podcast with Matt R. He was on episodes, I believe, 96 and 122. And like I said in the intro, he is the man who was a New Orleans police officer during Hurricane Katrina and either witnessed or heard stories of reptilians roaming around the streets of New Orleans. He was later abducted and brought to a mall in northern Louisiana where he participated in drills and I don't know about you guys. I've always found Matt R, at least in his story and the way he presents it, really fascinating. Like I've always, of the, all the unbelievable things, I he was one of the most believable to me. Dude, he's so down to earth, and he knows what he's talking about. He doesn't sound very, insane. Very compelling. He just he he's just very matter of fact about it, and that makes it compelling. He's not all dramatic. No, and it doesn't sound like he's talking from uh, like talking points or anything. I mean, he he knows what he's talking about, and he presents himself in a way that I I find very believable. So let's uh let's just jump to it and hear the Unbelievers podcast first episode. Man, what a get! And I just want to say, so one of the things we wanted to do when we started this podcast was to kind of try to find some of the people that have been on the program before and get an update. And it's been three years since Matt R. was on the show. But off the top of your head, Jude, who are some other people that you got you would want to hear us interview? Uh, Andy Liu? No. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you, mean, you mean Akira Natasu? 
Oh, that's right. No, um, no, no. No one wants to hear Andy Lou. Look, no offense, Andy Lou. Okay. <laughs> we want to hear who. Like, I, I just say the top of my list was Matt R. And I'd say second, probably the Tulpa Johnny kid. T. Tulpa, Tulpa I was going to say Johnny T. Johnny T for Love sure. My Johnny T. Oh, We've already oh. reached out to Johnny T and he wants to be on the program. And we are well, going to have him. But Tulpa kid hear... and Corton. Oh, Johnny, yeah, oh alive, my gosh. Though. If he's alive. Yeah. Wait, wait. That, wait. Am that I, guy I, made he, no, we, the Yael guy. Yael. Yael yeah. uh, John. Oh, I, I have oh, one. Of, like a, but I don't want to hear from the Yael guy again. I really don't. I, <laughs> it'll be funny, I'm sure. But I want to hear from Bill's Buster. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, Buster, for sure. I guess it's been good that it's been oh, quiet on his front. You know, that's probably good. But I still want to hear from him. I miss him. Definitely. Yeah. If that could probably surprise me. I wouldn't even think about that. That's such a good pull. Seems so obvious. But at the same time, it. yes, we got to get in touch with Bill's Buster. Especially because right. we got that one poll result that said, like, hey, Unbelievers Podcast, great job. Hope good luck in the future, signed LL. Like, yeah. no, we need we need to talk to Bill's Busters and figure out how to keep this guy away from us. Definitely. There's a lot of people we need to talk to, but tonight we have Reptilian Abductee, Matt R. Where has he been for three years? Let's find out. <laughs> All right, so we're here with Matt R., reptilian abductee and notorious guest of the Unbelievable Podcast. Matt, welcome to Unbelievers Podcast. Well, thanks for having me back on. Yeah, it's great to have you. Now, you were on episodes 96 and 122 of the Unbelievable Podcast, and we learned a lot about your time after Katrina and, uh, and everything that happened after that. But, um, man, it's been three and a half years since you've been on. It was, like, early 2015. So let us know what's been going on with you and the reptilians. Well, um, you know, uh, do, do you want me to, re to, to rehash my story, or do you want me to just pick up with what's happened since then? I, I think you can pick up what's happened since. Um, okay. Yeah. So I don't know if those existing archives are still on. No, this is a new show that's replacing is, the old show. We, yeah, we, we can definitely splice in little bits and pieces or at least give a little recap too later on. So I think if from here we pick up from what's happened since, because I know a lot's happened with you in the past couple yeah. of years too. I'll just make like a, a very quick uh, fortune cookie sized readers. Uh, I'll, I'll try and fit it in like 20 seconds. It was just a, uh, a you know, headline title. And that was, you know, I was on the New Orleans police during Katrina and I've had, you know, several reptilian abductions. One of the main ones being, I was taken to a mall after dark with a whole bunch of other police and military. And we were training reptilians in crowd control or being used as training uh, objects while they trained in crowd control and used us sort of as the actors in that scenario. And of, uh, that that's sort of the main, you know, the, the the crux of the story. But yeah, a lot of things have happened since we've last talked. Um, quite a mm -hmm. bit, actually. I had um, uh, almost two years ago, uh, Christmas. That that would be uh, Christmas in 2016. I had an abduction where um, it it was. I was taken underground and it was, uh, yeah, I, I come to on this sort of, this diamond shaped stone table and there's this female reptilian above me. She's not too tall, um, you know, more around the, the six foot range, which is for reptilians uh, kind of on the shorter side. And she looked a lot like one of those Sumerian you look at those ancient Sumerian statues of reptilians. Those, those, uh, I'm sure you've you've seen them in various specials and articles on, on UFOs. Uh, yeah, that. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. 
yeah, she she looked like one of those statues. I mean, you know, a living version of, albeit without the sort of um, whatever. She didn't have the headdress. Like if you look at those those statues, you'll see this female reptilian, and she's like carrying you know a small child, and she has something on her head. And it looks like a wig. I don't know what that was, but she didn't have. That was the only difference. She didn't have anything on her head like that. And um, I wake up. I'm seeing her, and the first thing she says over to a reptilian guard that's on the other side of this table. She says, like, ooh, you know, I, I should eat him. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. No Whoa. kidding. But but not not like in a, not, not in that, you know, I, I mean, like, just in, in a, like, oh, man, it, I, I wish I could just, you know, cons- in, not in a sexual way. <laughs> well, yeah, like almost oh, right. playful or just uh, absentmindedly kind of, huh. Yeah, but, but like like when you're you know looking at like a a good cake or something you're on a diet you're like oh I I, I should eat that but you know I, I really can't but uh, <laughs> right right like the intention is she's not going to but she has to say it just because you're there she she honestly seemed hungry she honestly did but uh, <laughs> I, I, I I I reflexively I just jab at her because like this is within like three seconds of me waking up and I just yeah. like. You know, throw throw a punch, and this the, this larger male brown skin gar- uh, reptilian guard on the other side he grabs my arm, like intercepts it. And what's funny is, you know, the next day I was left with this really horrible bruise on the inner part of my forearm, like two of them actually, like we were, like two, two of his fingers like clipped into me, and he even left kind of a claw mark there. And I did a whole article on phantommonsters dot com. You know, it was called the the pathology. You know, the, the word pathology of reptilian bruise patterns. And because um, I found another article, another person who is a female who had been abducted by reptilians, and she had a bruise on her arm that looked almost identical in the pattern and the claw mark um, to mine. The next thing I remember, she has this other reptilian there, like a, a winged drake, like an albino. This is the first time I've seen one of these winged albino reptilians that, you know, like. Uh, David Wilcock and Craig <laughs> Gordon was talking about um, negatively, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was a male, and she had she referred him over to me to do sort of these energy exercises where I'd stand facing him and sort of mirror these patterns. These I wouldn't call it yoga. I, I guess yoga would be the best thing to compare it to the kind of patterns, the kind of uh, poses. That's the correct word he was making. Like and, Tai Chi, almost. Yeah, not Roadhouse Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. the, the most accurate depiction of Tai Chi on film, of course, Roadhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> that was, you know, it, it ended up being a positive experience. But I did feel like my psychic abilities really got a boost after that, kind of, uh, kind of substantially, whatever they did. And so, the, so those were led by reptilians? Yeah. The, I didn't see any greys. I didn't see any humans in that experience. I mean, it's more it's most notable because it left that really horrible, vivid bruise on my inner right forearm and and that claw mark, which, you know, matched up. I did, did the whole article on it. And, um, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, <laughs> that, that, that happens a lot with reptilian abductees where when they have encounters of females, they tend to be pretty sarcastic like that. Hmm. That tends to be like kind of you know, make lots of jokes and comments like that, even more hmm. so than males. Um, Cause the males being a little more aggressive, you know, they, they, they're only going to joke around so much because then it would escalate the violence, but the females, they, that's, it's kind of the norm with them, but those yeah. that's the first albino reptilian experiences I've ever had. That was it. Like up until then, it was all like at the mall doing the crowd control training. Um, those were all brown and dark green scale reptilians. There was no albinos. So, so would you say that there are different species within the reptilians? There's different. There's the the darker kind of brown colored. Then there's some of the ones that are a little bit more green. And then you're talking now about these albino ones. So they're on different like tiers with like their personalities. Yeah, well, where it gets kind of interesting if the albinos are you familiar with simon parks he's talked a lot mm-hmm. he's, absolutely oh yeah we're very familiar with simon parks yeah okay. he was featured in our first episode as well ah well interesting thing happened i got his email through 